Sometimes life can feel like a real race when your to-do list doesn't seem to end and the pressure is going on and on. So we're helping you handle that pressure and the, this will go a long way in your real life. So Dr. Mount Townsend is here with ways to keep the pressure in check. So the first question I have for you, is it is it even possible to keep, you can't avoid pressure, no. right? You can't life. avoid stress. It's life. And you said that if we avoided it, we wouldn't even be living life, right? We wouldn't right? be in life, right? So how do yeah. we do this? How do we deal well, with this stress day Some day? just go to Netflix. That's where I go. And, um, <laughs> I but, like it. You know what? We want to just check out and just try to avoid life. And, you know, that might work one night a week, but it won't work six nights a week. So if we can't avoid it, then what I teach is we've got to learn how to make peace. We got to make peace and um, you kind of got to do it. It's hard because it's like changing the tire while the car's still rolling. We don't have time to stop to make the peace. So what I want to do is teach people that there's certain skills, there's certain patterns, certain principles that if we start doing them, we can actually find the peace in our lives. Okay. And that's good to hear because, you know, is anxiety, I've thought a lot of times, is it a control issue. Is that yeah. the problem? Sometimes it's a control issue. Sometimes it's a chemical issue. Sometimes it's an environmental issue. Sometimes it's just how you've created your life. So anxiety can come at you a variety of different ways. I don't know that we actually fully know. In fact, I know we don't know why some people get anxious and some don't. Some actually create more anxiety everywhere they go. So one of the things I teach is, um, I, as we kind of spell the word peace in our life, we've got to kind of put ourselves in the driver's seat. Meaning, I don't want you to put yourself in the driver's seat to create more stress, but I want you to realize this is your baby. This thing's not going away. If you have anxiety in your life and whatever reason you have it, I need you to start owning it. I need you to start driving it. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody come and tell me that they feel every sign of anxiety. And I'm like, have you ever been diagnosed as having anxiety? And they're like, oh no, but I know I've got it. My mom had it, my grandma had it, everybody has it, but they've yet to do anything about it because they don't want to get in the driver's seat. They don't want to necessarily own it because I guess they're afraid they don't know what to do with it. So I need you to own it and get ready to start taking charge of so it. So stop kind of putting it on the back burner. Yeah. Start saying, okay, this, this is my away. life. Right. This is a part of me. That's right. Now what are we doing? Right. So so you say emotional awareness is a big part of that. I mean, Huge that's part of it. And part of it is if you already have anxiety, you have been called. You've got a gift. You've got a lucky gift. Lucky you. you. Count are, yourselves you are, lucky. The, the funny thing about it is there are great blessings to being an anxious person. Anxious people I tend to be that. more sensitive. They tend to be more spiritual in a way. They tend to sense things. So I want you to know because you've been called, then you better get really good at emotional intelligence. You need to start noticing your emotions. Notice when you're having them. Notice when you're not. Notice what caused it. Identify what your triggers are. So what we teach in our program is learn how to start gaining the skills of understanding what's going on. Have words for your emotions. Don't just don't just go, ah. Tell us what your emotion is. I'm feeling sad today. I'm feeling moodier today than I normally do. And start detecting why. What's the trigger that may have led you there? So it's uh, being able to identify what the trigger was yeah. and see that, it's a, that you have this in your life. That you have it. But then kind of siphoning and, this and, into and something that could be useful. One of the most powerful things is you can finally do something with it once you're aware of what it is. And so I, I eventually like us to take the word anxiety. I don't like that word, so I'd rather use the word worry. I'm starting to feel worry. I'm starting to see that my worry's kicking in. And you might notice that it's, I don't even know why I'm worried now, but I might be worried for something tomorrow, and I've been thinking about it. And once we can start talking about it, we actually, because we've named it, we can kind of manipulate it more. We can work it more. And how do we help kids with this? Because adults aren't the only ones who feel no. the worry, right? No, right. So, so as an adult, I mean, this conversation makes perfect sense to me. Okay, let's think about this. Let's yeah. identify these things. But how do we translate that down to our kids? I, when I hear the signs of whatever they're saying, if they're, if they're stressed, if they're worried, if they're feeling fear, I hold it up and I go, I might ask questions. What do you think that feeling is, honey? What are you feeling? Is it worry or is it fear? Is it anxiousness? And once I let them to start to, to identify the word, tell me more about it and have them explain it more. And what were some of the thoughts that maybe led to the worry? And then what I like to do is I like to accelerate what I call solutions instead of stories. A lot of us, once we feel this emotion, we feel a need as human beings to have a story about it or to make up a reason why it's happening. So instead of trying to figure out, uh, you know, why this is happening to me, 
Why, why me? Why of all people? Why, why am I the only one that stresses because I'm the only one that can't get to this place on time? Why is it me, instead of getting into those worries, instead of blaming people, instead of getting into all the storytelling, just start to ask yourself, how can I handle it? There's one question that's the most important question for anybody that's struggling with anxiety, is how am I going to handle anxiety, the emotion? How am I going to handle these feelings? It's not why they're there, it's not where they came from, and it's not who you can blame, because the more you spend time in that smoke, the more you're gonna stir the emotion and get nowhere. And there is an element to that, because I can, you know, I can feel when I start getting worried yeah. about things that you tend to kind of, okay, well this is the entire series of reasons that I've right. gotten to this point, and it's this and this and uh -huh. this, and if those things wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have been, but generally if I'm a right. typically an anxious person, mm -hmm. maybe I would have been, yeah. and so it's letting go of those things and saying, you know what? Yeah. I'm feeling this way, how am I gonna deal with it? None of it matters how. You know where I see this a lot are kids. Uh, kids that feel social anxiety that don't wanna go to school, and then they'll tell you 50 reasons why they don't. They don't like the kids, the teachers are rude, I don't like the subjects, it's cold when I'm there. I could spend six days with them talking about every <laughs> one of those, but it won't deal with how they're gonna handle their emotion today, and we want them, once they're emotionally intelligent, to start handling it and learning skills. Okay, and so you say the best thing to do is to create healthy alternatives. Yeah. So what are those alternatives? Well, the reality is, in fact, I made a list. There's 50 that I teach. 50, okay. and it's everything from breathing, which is the number one I would ever teach, is start managing your breathing. So in a moment of yeah. worry, you're mm -hmm. taking a second and saying, how am I breathing right now? Well, and you, or even just noticing it, because you might even notice doing the show, you get a little anxious, you get a little worried, you get a little nervous, not and you all. no longer Come breathe. <laughs> you, you're not even breathing anymore. But there's a lot of little things you can do. You could just start to think about somebody that you really revere. And if somebody you revered was there to talk about your anxiety with, what would you talk to that person about? If Buddha sat right there and could talk to you, what would you want to talk to him about? And what do you think Buddha would tell you about your anxiousness? If, you're, if God could sit right there and you could talk to God, what would God say about your anxiety? And notice that when you start to think that way, it starts to change some of your emotions. There's a million ideas. You could take a hot bath. You could take a cold shower. By the way, either one of those is going to get you out, out of a lot of your anxiety. Oh, that is so you funny. could write a letter. Little physical things. You could serve a bunch of people. You could um, make a meal. So it's just meal. something to kind of switch mm -hmm. where you are. Switch your That's reality right. for one second. Notice okay. none of that can happen if you haven't recognized the emotion, recognized you're going into your worry, and then ask the one question. How am I going to handle it? And then what I suggest at the very end is use your essence. Yes, this is what I wanted to get to. To start engaging uh, a plan. We're going to create a real calmness code. And I what is have, this calmness code? Because you mentioned yeah, it. It's what, so important. What is this? I try to have my clients come up with a code for how and what they need to maintain more calmness in their life. I know that I can't go all day without breaks in between to find some space to just calm down and, and relax. So I know that I can't pace myself all day long or I'll be a stress case. I know I need sleep, that's part of my code. I know what foods I can't eat. I know how much caffeine I should drink and I need to stay in those parameters. I have about five or six different solutions that work for me. I know that regularly I need to shut my eyes for about 10, 15 minutes, not even nap, but shut them. Because when I shut them, it turns off all the other information in my world and it helps me destimulate. So this is this is great. Everyone is going to have a different calmness yeah, code. Everyone. So go through, think about your life, think what, what things need? kind of calm you mm -hmm. down and tell us about your workshops. That you Coolest have thing, uh, March 18th is Saturday, nine to one o'clock. We're going through how to create peace in the middle of the pressure and uh, we're gonna give everyone the tools and the skills, and then we're gonna give them as many of the 50 skills as we can. Uh, if you go to matttownsend.com, put in Studio 5, we'll give you a discount. Awesome, thanks Join so much, us. Matt. Thank